everyone, Squirrelcore here, and we're going to do the last uh, video for actually let's turn this thing for uh, integrated dynamics. So this video is uh, going to be a bit different as it's going to specifically focus. One moment. There we go. It's going to specifically focus on. Well, the advanced features of the mod, which I call them the advanced features because they're not the most bait, they're not the more basic features like just what does a writer or reader do. These are the, well, advanced features. They let you do some more complex logic. This is where the meat of the mod is. However, I'm going to say this now. If you are the kind of person who has difficulty understanding redstone and how to set up redstone gates and everything, go learn that before you continue. If you are a programmer or you're somebody who's good with redstone, then you will have a very easy time with this. If not, well then you won't because this very much leads into programming and everything. Now, what we have here is we have a display panel showing whatever I put in this, just so you can see what that value is. And we are going to just go over everything. Now, these features are actually what are required, and you got a little hint into this, how to set up this. This is a new world. I just recreated this, which is the simple little uh, variable store and Make sure it's clear and day all the time. And what we need to, and the heart of all this was going to probably be revolving around the logic programmers, where we're probably going to need to spend most of our time. But for now, let's just uh, look at what we need here. So here we have a redstone writer, and we have a proxy. Now, the proxy. To read this description, a vote expose a variable reference as a, as an aspect. What this means is whatever variable is here is the output of whatever variable card is connected to the proxy. And we want two of these. One for this and one for this. Now, the next thing I want is I want to come over here for this, and I want an integer. And I want an integer for 1, or for 0 rather. I want an integer at 1. Two. I didn't count those right. Three and four. And operating the the uh, proxy table when you just want to do an input like this is really that easy. It's actually quite intuitive once you understand how it works, and I'll go into more detail with that in a moment. But these are integers these variable cards but they're more they're better you can more relate them to being a constant than an integer as in these won't be changing or not an integer a variable so what I want to do is I want to put in one first and one two three four now underneath this we have a pipe running to this chest as an output uh, what's the exact wording of that coming Um, work. Squirrel. Killer. Set. Zero. Firm. And. Ten. I had been messing around with a bit of Tomcraft, seeing if I could do this with golems, but there wasn't a way to nicely do this with golems. Now what we have here is we have a variable card which is setting this to 
zero. So we can see it's zero there. And out here, we're getting an output of zero. Now, if I press this button, it's going to pull that card out, and it's just going to feed in the next one in line, making this a value of one. Now two, now three, now four, and then we get zero. Now the problem is, is when this has no valid input, but doesn't have the card actually removed, it gets stuck on whatever the last input put into it was. This is just going to show me error proxy of 5D0 is not exposing a variable, which is way easier to understand. I guess, well, not really. You have to actually understand how the mod works to understand that, but this is so you can dynamically change a variable, what variable is fed into the, there. It's more for use with uh, piping systems and more complicated automation. Now, over here, this variable card is hooked up into this basic drawer from storage drawers. And that's because we're going to look into this right here. What I want is I want slot item from this. But what we're going to do is we're going to get out some coal. We're going to put that in there. And it's going to say there's one coal. And we're going to use a materializer because I want a variable that shows coal. I also want this. And I want this to uh, show some specific information in a moment. Ah, yes, here's another card that's linked to this. Forgot that I stored one there. Excellent. So this is connected to coal. And if we come over here and we type in, uh, I want equals. So what we do is we will give this a very variable card. And we want slot item from part ID 0 of type item variable ID 29, variable ID 30 here. And if we come here, we just pop this in. And what is telling us? Variable ID 29 could not be found within current network and variable ID 29. Now they need to go into this, a variable store which you just pop into there and it says true. If I take it out, it will now say false. And if I put in that, that's also false. The reason for this is this wants it to spe this specifically wants uh, it specifically wants this but the variable here the first slot of this to contain coal. That's all it wants. It wants the output of this to read coal. And the output here, and so long as that's true, then this is true. Now, there is of course not equals, which is if I did the same setup, but I put not equals coal, then this would be inverse. Now that's not the only real detail that you need to cover here, but for most things, it then just becomes stacking on top of that, upon that, upon that. And there are some special functions here you can get. For example, you can get the burn time. For example, so if I take this burn time, I just go here and I ask for burn time of whatever's in this slot and I make that a variable and then I just provide it with the variable it wants it's going to tell me the burn time of whatever item I put in here so that's uh, 1600 ticks then we could put in wood which is 300 ticks or we could put in, oh, what's the burn time of this? 32,000? 
How does that compare to normal blocks of coal? Yeah, it's twice as long as normal blocks of coal. And this could let you do any number of things. You could have it output any amount of information you wanted. So this is one of those you're you're limited by your imagination type things. I'm not going to give you too many suggestions on what you could use this for, but you could check this and you could have something that if a chest had an invalid item, it would sign an alarm. Or you could have the let me think. You could have an item frame, and if you put in a say a diamond into that item frame, it would activate a secret room over here. Use this to power some redstone to open up a secret room. Or any other number of possibilities. It's very much a whatever you can imagine you could use this for type thing. There's almost any tool you would need in here. And I would love to be able to tell you every single use for every single item in here. But I can't because I simply am not capable of thinking of all of them. But you should be able to come up with a use for most of these. I am very confident actually that most of you will be able to come up with a use for these things. Quite confident indeed. So thank you all for watching. Oh. Actually, before I go, I do have a few more things I need to show you. Uh, little features that I kind of skipped over. So there's these, the light panels. Which, there's the static light panel. Which is, uh, the one time I actually want it to be night. Static light panel just outputs light. There's a bit of a bug with these light panels, by the way, right now. Once they are removed, they don't actually disappear. And then there's a dynamic light panel, which, well, it outputs a light level equal to the variable put into it. So we'll just put in one, two, three, four. As we did here, let's get one of those out. And then what we can do is we can see it hopefully get brighter, which it isn't. But, well, you can't see it because of uh, the bug over here with the lighting. I'll need to report that. But the dynamic light panel lets you do a few things, and of course you can hide things. Uh, you can name your variables. For example, night check for auto day. You can just use that to name item right on the spot. You could, oh, well that's what we use the labor for in general really. Then of course, if you want to hide any aspect, you just combine facades with the block you want to use to disguise everything. And you just go on down like this. And this can help you hide ugly, ugly, ugly cabling. Now, there is some visual, yeah, with it. 
And if we just do a little bit of a chisel and bit stuff let's just take one of these MC multi part which hasn't picked up too too much that's right there is a crash there related to a uh, yeah the crash you just saw is related to chisel and bits when interacting with MC multi part I forgot that existed. However, that was going to be the conclusion of the episode anyhow. That should cover all the advanced features of the mod. It will cover some of the miscellaneous features of the mod. And more or less, that should be enough to go forward and understand everything. As new features are added to the mod, I will be, of course, continuing on with these videos. I'm going to go and uh, report a couple of bugs now, and thank you all for watching, and bye bye